Welcome to the Modecast. Jeremy Mode here. We got my awesome, awesome brother Ryan Mode with me. What's up, everybody? This is going to be uh, episode one of our podcast. Uh, we uh, decided to do this because we thought it'd be really fun to interview our friends and start storing our uh, stories on a have it on digital record. Because, uh, well, my memory is terrible, and uh, Ryan is my memory bank for now. Jeremy has no memory. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Should be a great time. Um, me and Jeremy always get in deep conversations, so I thought it'd be fun to record them and, like Jeremy said, get to know our friends better. Should be a should be a fun time. Um, nothing too spectacular. Hopefully, just uh, some good laughs and good conversation. Now, for our first episode, it's kind of terrible, but bear with us; it gets better. I promise. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say the first first few might be terrible so bear with us they get pretty good i mean we've already got a few <laughs> recorded but yeah they do they do a lot better but uh anyways here's episode one us just talking and probably sounding really nervous on the mics so uh enjoy but uh before we turn it on uh we should probably turn this back on sooner uh, we got into what's going on with our uh, mom right now. Um, she's not to bring the mood down, but she's uh, uh, in hospice right now, pretty much dying from uh, stage four colon cancer. Uh, from here, we don't know how long she has left, maybe a few weeks. But uh, we've been thinking a lot about uh, assisted suicide for uh, those of you who remember <laughs> the Dr. Kevorkian type stuff. Because the things we've seen our mom go through with all this, and we've been talking to a lot of people about it, is an interesting subject for us because it's so controversial. Because the dying like cancer, the way our mom is, and we've heard other stories from friends and family with the same kind of stuff, that uh, it's just so miserable. It's such a miserable experience. I mean, it's not our, there's, it's, there's no quality of life there. I mean, people keep talking about how, like, oh, you know, she's still alive. That's great. That's awesome. But it's like she's in misery. Like, I don't understand how that's a way to live. And, you know, I get the religious side of it. But, I mean, it seems like, you know, it'd be more um, humane. humane. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Thank you. To, uh, you know, have someone like Dr. Kevorki around for assisted suicide. I mean, you figure is, there's, what, two states now that have illegally I thought it was legalized? just one, Oregon. I know Oregon, but somebody told me recently that it was uh, two states, but I'm pretty sure it's only Oregon. Yeah, I believe it's just Oregon. But even though it's legal up there, I've heard stories that it's really high and hard to find a doctor that's even willing to, you know, touch you, which I get it. You know, it goes against what they were trained to do. How, how does that work legally? Like, like, I mean, since it is legal one, how does it work legally since it is legal in Oregon? Um, I mean, can you still pursue them? I mean, like uh, like a lawsuit-wise? Like who? Who would be doing the suing? No, like their family. Let's say in like, I don't know, like... Or like a wrongful death suit? Like you yeah, you know, like that's probably why I, a lot of people don't want to touch it. I mean, well, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons not to. I mean, cause just because someone sues you for something doesn't mean you don't have to go to court for it. In California, I don't know about any other state in California, if somebody sues you and you don't show up to court, you automatically lose. Yeah, but, I mean, if, if it's like legal to do it, then I don't know how they could sue. I mean, there's too much I don't know about the, how law works. Can you imagine the one doctor though that is okay with it? He's just probably making a killing out there. <laughs> <laughs> he's just no pun intended. He's making just a killing out there. <laughs> just breaking into the funds, you know? Like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys are all thinking I'm an asshole. <laughs> I don't care. That was funny. <laughs> it's just one guy like now. Oh, this is working to my benefit. Sign me up, Scotty. Literally making a killing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, I definitely, I definitely see a religious aspect of it. But until you've seen someone go through the suffering, I mean, that's it's rough. You know, like that's it's definitely hard. Especially, well, then, especially when someone has delirium and, and they're scared all the time, and it's just it's not fun. Well, then she's not there. I mean, her mind isn't there. I mean, she's alive and awake and she talks and but she's constantly hallucinating constantly doesn't know where she is she's like you said she's always scared it's just that constant look of panic in her face is like it's just it's so sad to see but, but like you know when i've talked to like religious people they'll, they'll sit there and be like well you know i want to go out the way the good lord intended and i, I don't mean to like i'm sorry if i offend anybody but i i just think that's that's horseshit i i i honestly do because i 
What always it, because it feels like an excuse. Like yeah. they, they don't know what else to say. So, but when we hear that, because we're not religious, we're like, well, that doesn't make sense to us. That yeah. sounds stupid. Yeah. I'm not not calling me stupid, but that's just the way it sounds to us because we're not religious. Which I've realized recently, I need to learn more about religion before I even shit on anybody. Yeah, who's oh, yeah, religious. Of but um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just really weird. Like when someone says that, though, I feel like it's just they're saying that because that's what they're supposed to say. It's exactly what it feels like. Yeah. It's not like that's how they truly feel. I mean, if you watch someone go through suffering, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to to imagine that that's the way you honestly truly feel. Like watching this, uh, a loved one like just be scared all the time and scared for a while. It's just it's it's not it's not fun. So yeah, it's definitely definitely a hot topic with us because we're definitely brutally honest. Well, anyone that knows us, Jeremy is hilarious. For those of you that don't know him, because. Jeremy will make a joke, but he has such a dry sense of humor. So if you don't know him, you're like, what the fuck? Like, this guy's dead serious right now. But yeah. those of us that do, we're sitting there dying laughing because the person that doesn't know him is freaking out. So you guys won't be able to see his facial expression, so you guys won't know when he does dry humor. But if you got to see him, <laughs> you'd scare the shit out of you. Because Jeremy will be fucking brutally honest, and then you're like, oh my God. You're like, dude, he's joking. Laugh. <laughs> he's joking. <laughs> well, it's because I don't smile and I don't realize it. I keep a straight face all the time. <laughs> so I tell you a joke with a straight face. <clears throat> That's, that's why people don't like me. <laughs> so Jeremy will say <laughs> fucking harsh things, and I'm like, dude, laugh. It was a joke. He was kidding. He was really not that crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> dude, I need to tape this damn fucking microphone to my face. Like, all I do is pull it from one hand, away from my mouth, to the other hand, wiggle it around. So note to self, we might need to buy Ryan a... Uh, a headset mic, so that way he doesn't have to ever have the mic leave his mouth. Yeah, I, fit, I fiddle <laughs> too much. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it's a trip. Every time I have brought up assisted suicide to somebody, I get to the craziest like facial expression out of them. Like, like I'm like I'm a crazy person, which I get it. It's a subject nobody wants to touch. It's hard to talk about. Yeah. Which I mean, in the past, I would have never had a, a problem talking about it, but. Now it's been like, you know, brought like right in front of my face to where it's like I constantly think about it because, you know, we spend so much time with mom and it's such a shitty feeling every time I'm there and I'm with her because <clears throat> my I don't feel like I've I don't feel like I have seen my mom in, you know, four months because the day she got got well even sicker, you know, her mind went away, too. And it, she's just not the same person anymore. I can't even have you can't have a conversation with her. I mean, we pretty much are there just to, you know, make sure that she's comfortable. Yeah. Which I want. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be miserable, but that's all I see her as is being miserable. Yeah. You know what I wonder, though? If people would have a change of heart, if, if let's say, you were to show them, you know, the after effect, like, w would you, like, would they sign that piece of paper, you know? What to, do you mean the after effect? Like, let's say, like, if we were to be able to show mom, like, what she'd be going through now, like, all right, once you get to the stage, would you want us to do a suicide? Like, the stage she's at now, like, would you want... Yeah, it's kind of a... It's, it's also controversial because she can't consent to anything now. Well, I mean, like... Just but you, so you, it'd just, have to be something you set up, like you're saying, like, when I get here, if yeah. this happens... Yeah, exactly. That's when I'm done. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, because you figure mom can't talk. She can talk, but we can't understand. No, she just mumbles. She barely moves her mouth. Yeah. And, she's and too it, weak. She's not. She's not there. Her liver's so affected. Um, she's not there at all. I mean, it's just. It's. It's almost like. I wouldn't. Even say, I'd say it's. It's like taking care of an infant. Almost. It's. It's. It's really sad. Well, it's worse because you know the infant's going to grow and get smarter. We're on like the you know Benjamin Button aspect of things where things are just going downhill. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> like I said, I know a lot of you guys, that, if you guys are listening, I mean, probably thinks that uh, what we're saying is uh, a little harsh, but anyone that's seen uh, a loved one suffer, it's, it's pretty rough. It's really rough. By the way, this is something we want to talk to people about because we have nobody to talk to it about because nobody ever wants to talk about it. And yeah. it'd be nice to have other people's perspectives maybe, you know, enlighten us a little bit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's just a touchy subject. We don't even like to bring up our mom to... Uh, to anyone just because it's just everyone well, gets off. we want to talk we want to talk about this but we're also not trying to bring the mood down yeah exactly yeah it's if if, if you, this gets brought up everyone just wants to say like, oh i'm sorry and it's like that's not what we're looking for we just, we just want to you know shoot the shit we want to know your guys opinion on it you know 
Yeah, because it's everybody feels sorry for us, and I get it. Like it sucks, especially people that knew our that know our mom. It's like they feel really bad, but it's like no, we we're just looking for you know piece of you know, just to talk. We just want to talk about the subject, like you know. We're kind of we've been dealing with this for so long now that we're kind of numb to the fact that our mom's dying. Like we don't see it as that now. It's just something we do, which sucks. I hate that feeling. Yeah, granted, it's gonna be a lot worse when she actually does when she does pass. But it's almost like we've we've lost her in a way because I mean we like I said we we can't talk to her. Um, she's she's not there. I mean, no, she I mean, she barely she, recognizes us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many times has she called us somebody else? That or. Who are you? I mean, yeah, she she doesn't know who we are. So I mean, oh, that one time tripped me out when she uh, when she asked uh, nanny who I was, and then uh, she said, uh, you know, it's Jeremy, it's your son, and she said, my son, I don't have kids. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck? yeah. She said that several times. <clears throat> and the doctor did tell us that her mind was gonna like you know rewind to like you know past memories, which was which tripped me out because you know she had me when she was twenty, so. You know, how far back did she go? Yeah, exactly. Like high school? <laughs> this is just such a weird subject because, like, before you heard a doctor Kevorkian, you'd be like, oh, my God, this guy's a fucking nutcase. I but never they, thought so. <laughs> you, well, Jeremy is a nutcase. <laughs> no, but, I mean, if I, if I, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's weird. Like, you think, God, this guy's a nutcase. Who the hell would do that? But then when you actually, when you watch someone go through that, you're like, oh, I can totally see why, why this would be relevant. Yeah, but I think there's only one way to get on our side of things. Yeah. Is to, like, you know, have someone close to you yeah. experience this to where, like, because if it's just, if you have somebody show you who they cared about going through the process, you're like, damn, that kind of sucks. But, you know, still, like, you know, you can't just kill yourself. Yeah, exactly. But, no, like, when you have somebody that close to you go through it, it's like, fuck, I wouldn't want to go through that. That's it's terrible. Not to mention, I mean, she's 100% being taken care of. Like, who wants. To be, I mean, your dignity is out the window. Yeah. 100%. You have no more dignity. Yeah, no, 100%. But, so, like I said, I'm willing, I, like, I would, I want, we want somebody to talk to because I, I would like to be enlightened. Like, maybe I shouldn't be so negative about the whole thing. <laughs> I can't stop smiling because anytime I go to talk, Jeremy's fucking hand signaling me. Fucking hand to, <laughs> hand Mike to, to mouth. Mike to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Otherwise, it's going to be me talking, and that's it. I'm, I'm going to have a one-sided hey, I'm gonna have, conversation. I'm going to have a nice background noise in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This guy. Well, yeah, those are some of our crazy thoughts. Some of our crazy thoughts, especially if you've never been through it. If you've been through it, I guarantee you a lot of you are like, oh, yeah, I definitely understand what they're saying. I can't wait to start pulling like Trevor's stories out of him. Oh yeah, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah, this is cool because like we get to doing this, we get to ask our friends questions that we would never normally ask our friends. Yep. I mean, not that I want to put anybody on the spot or anything. It'd just be fun to like get to like. I mean, how how? I mean, our really good friends. How well do we really know them? I mean, we don't. I mean, we've gotten to the point where we all have separate lives. I mean, me and you both have kids. Fuck, Kevin's got a kid now. Yeah. And then as everybody's gone in their own direction, it's gotten harder to keep in touch and, like, you know, you know, just, you know, stay friends pretty much. I mean, we get to hang out with our friends, with, you know, friends, you know, once a month at the most. Because, plus, we have the distance between us now. Yeah. When you bring kids, for those of you who don't have kids, when you bring kids in the picture, oh my God, it's, it's such a game changer. It's such a game changer. Um, yeah. It's weird. Like, people that, you I mean, you'd be the best of friends with. I mean, you just, I don't know, you, you feel like you kind of don't click in a way anymore. It's really weird. For, for me, at least. I, 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 don't, I don't feel like I have as well, many just, things. Your life has changed because now you have this thing that you're taking care of and you're 100% responsible for and you're trying to do a good job. And then, but trying to re maintain a friendship with someone who doesn't have kids is hard because they don't have the same, you know, responsibilities as you do. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that uh, our friends don't understand you know, that we have responsibilities, it just becomes harder because, I mean, how many times have you gotten a text message and you're in the middle of, you know, changing a diaper or, you know, you're at the park with Landon, so you just go, okay, I'm going to text them back later and you just completely forget. Yeah, it'll be days, days that go by until I'll be scrolling through text messages. I'm like, oh shit, I never text them back. Yeah, it sucks. It's just... I mean, hell, I don't know if it was having a kid or not, but I feel like I have gotten, my short-term memory has gotten really, really bad since having a kid. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I don't understand where that comes from or why, but it's like all of a sudden I can't remember, like, you know, what I just did five minutes ago or what I, you know, how many, I mean, in the past, you know, few years, like, I'll walk into a room and it's like, I don't even remember what the hell I came in here for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Several times. It's like 30 seconds ago, I, I had a reason. <laughs> Yeah, it's just weird, man. It's weird. Kids change, the, kids change everything. Everything. I never thought it was going to be this much of a change. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. It's just it's definitely hard to relate to people that don't have kids, though. It is. I mean, for me at least. I, I mean, how much the, of a douchebag do you feel like for all the opinions that you had about people with kids before you had a kid? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, now I actually no no no. Actually, now they're even stronger though. Now people that do have kids, I judge like, I'm like, dude, you fucking... Well, that, no, but I'm talking about the opinions that you had about what I'm going to do as a dad and what oh, I'm yeah, a yeah, parent. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> I'm going to be this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but now though, like, I do, I do really pay attention. I'm like, dude, play with your kid or, you know, like, especially the ones that just throw in front of TV. I mean, we, we have several employees. I mean, huh, like, you and I that, you know, we, we'll talk, we'll talk about our, our kids, what we do with them, and they're like... Oh yeah, you know, I just my kid just watched TV all day. It's like what? Like, dude, take your kid outside. I have so many friends, or not friends, but some people I've talked to, and it's like I don't understand. I mean, granted, people say it's really hard to be a parent. It is really hard to be a good parent. I don't. I would never consider myself a good parent. There's so much more I could do to be a better parent. But then I'm like, well, I know I'm not doing this. <laughs> so it uh, makes me feel better, but I still don't feel like a good parent. But then like it's it is super easy. What our uh, our friends say that it, it's. It, Super easy to be a parent. That's what TV's for. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a buddy I work with. He's like, he's like, isn't being a parent just about as hard as you make it? So I feel like if you want to be a shitty parent, just stick in front of a TV. <laughs> Which, I mean, it is true. Yeah, I guess being a parent isn't that hard if you want to be a douchebag as a parent. If you want to be a douchebag, then sure, being a parent is not that hard. But if you want to be a good parent, being a parent is hard. Then I never thought. Um I never thought I was going to have as much fun as I have as a parent. Yeah, it's a blast. It's definitely a blast. And it's a different kind of fun. Stuff that, well, if it wasn't my kid or, like, if it was just some random kid, I'd never have fun. I think it was stupid. But since it's my kid or, you know, my nephews, it's, I never thought I'd get joy out of seeing a smile on their face. You know what's funny, too, is, like, I used to, when, uh, when people show me a picture of their kids, it's like, Oh my God! Do not show me a picture of your kid. But now it's like when someone asks you a picture of my kid, I'm like, Oh yeah, for sure. You want to see? Yeah, check out this one. I got this one. Well, that's that's different than you know because you have the people that constantly throw like, Oh look at look at look at look at, and it's like I get that they're excited about it, but I don't know your kid. It doesn't make sense to me. And I just go, Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. That and as a guy, I just really don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. I think females have another uh, definitely uh, another look at things than we do. Cause, cause it makes me realize how much like I would ne- I don't do that. Cause I constantly have, when people do that to you, I never do it. And it's not that I don't care. It's just I don't care. I don't think you care. A lot of it though is women that do it. I mean, other guys aren't like that with other guys. Like, look at my kid. I mean, just women and men. I've met a few guys. Perspective. Really? <laughs> yeah. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, he'll never hear this. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I don't know. He might. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Uh, if he can't, if he can't handle a little honesty. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no. Kids, kids are definitely a game changer. Well, I think, I think this is my my biggest issue. Like when I'm am ca- catching up with somebody, and then they're t- talking about partying to me, and I have nothing. Like I don't party. You know what I mean? Like well, it's, it's very gotten rare. hard to relate to it now because yeah. it, that. Well, it just. It, it, at the end of the day, it's just gotten hard to relate to to that, like yeah. because we don't have the opportunity anymore. Yeah. I mean, because what did we do before our kids? Yeah, Party our ass off, but every weekend, like every weekend, was like, where are we gonna drink at? Yeah. You know, what bar are we going to? You know, what you know, what nightclub is it gonna be this weekend? It was just yeah. something that involved going out and drinking. That was it. And now we can't because, well, frankly, being hung over and taking care of a child sucks. Yeah. And you want to feel like a shitty parent? Try and take care of your kid hungover. You feel like a real <laughs> shitty parent. Yeah, trying to keep myself from throwing up, you know, while crawling around on the floor because that's the only way I can move at the moment. And trying to take care of a baby is the worst feeling in the world because I've never felt like a more of a douchebag. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. <clears throat> Not that I'm judging anybody out there because I'm the last person that needs to judge anybody. <laughs> uh, I've made plenty of mistakes. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I, th I think that's something I need to get past, though, because I, I feel like when I talk to people that don't, when I don't have kids, I'm like, and they're telling me about, like, like you know, just things that don't matter to me anymore, I guess. You know, and just, it's, it's, it, is, it is annoying to me. Well, it sucks because you hear about, they talk about their weekend, and it's something that doesn't matter to us anymore because we have more important things to do. Yeah. And more important things to take care of. And now, like, it, going out and having, going out to Disneyland with our kids seems like more fun than a night out drinking with friends at a bar. Yeah. And well, it's just the, it's not that that wouldn't be fun because I had a blast, I had a lot of fun on your birthday. Yeah. I mean, it, may, it might not look like I was having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was just really baked, so I couldn't really talk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's that's def definitely something to get past, though, because you figure, I mean, I used to, I don't know, I used to be that guy with people that have kids. Or, no, actually, you know, you know what annoys me the most, though? This 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 is what something that annoys me, though, is when people that don't have kids will, will tell you, like, well, why, why can't you just find a sitter? Because I, I don't want to. Just come out to them. Why can't you just find a sitter? It's like, I don't want to. Well, I mean, you do need to go out once in a while. Yeah. Like, like you can, you're just crazy with your routines. Yeah. And I get it. Like, it makes sense to me. Like, when never routine gets deviated, it takes a week to get it back. Yeah. But you do need to, like, having a babysitter well, for a few hours isn't well, going to deviate from your routine. Ex explain what a routine is for people that don't have kids. When you get your kids off routine, how shitty that is. Well, when you have them on a strict routine where, you know, it's almost like a prison system. Meals are at a certain time. Naps are at a certain time. You know, <laughs> playtime. Going out to the park is a certain time. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, it's like a prison routine. Like, everything is calculated, and it's the same thing over and over. You guys ready to go out to the yard ER today? <laughs> <laughs> but it's... It's playtime, motherfuckers. <laughs> but as a parent, it makes your life so much easier because everything... is They know what to... Your child knows what to expect. Yeah. And it makes their life easier. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, you see your friends that don't have the kid on the routine, and their life is so much harder than it has to be. Yeah. And when that root, I mean, when you have somebody who gives in to your child, like when, you know, hell, all of our, all the grandparents for our kids, like, spoil the shit out of our kids, and it, what they don't realize is what it does to us during the week. Yeah. Because then it screws up our whole routine, and it takes a week to get it back, and it's just a fight the entire time. Yeah. So, you know, it's less sleep, it's more frustration, it's just annoying. And yeah. you, but what you do, you can give up a few hours yeah. to go out. You and Jazz need, need you know, one, once a month at the very minimum. I mean, granted, we need to wait till our current situation is over. But after that, like, there's no reason that you and Jazz can't take a Saturday once a month and find a babysitter. Hell, yeah. me and Brittany can babysit for I you. I actually need to find an actual legit babysitter right here, though. Like, someone actually, because Jay and I, we don't have any family really out here in San Diego besides, you know, my stepmom and our dad. But, uh, other than that, I mean, we don't have any family out here. Well, we have a lot of family. It's just not family that we feel close to. Yeah. Like, and we, we don't feel comfortable asking for favors from them. Yeah. It's, not, it's not that we don't have family. We have, we have, ton, yeah, we yeah, have plenty true. of help we can get. We just yeah. don't feel comfortable asking for favors. Yeah, that's true. And if, yeah, we, yeah, if really, we ask I mean, them to watch want, our yeah. kids, they wouldn't let us pay them, and that makes us feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that's we need true. somebody that we could, that, that, like, we're asking you for something, but we want to make sure you're um, taking care of for it. You yeah. know, I can. I can afford to give you the money to watch the kid or our kids. And, you know, it just, we have a hard time accepting favors. I think that's what it is. I think if you don't accept money from me, it's like, I can't, like, I feel like you're doing too big, big of a favor watching my kids for me. It's like, you have to accept something from me. That's definitely a flaw of ours is that we have a hard time accepting, you know, any kind of gift from anybody. Well, it's like, Kev, what does Kev say every time we go? He's like, dude, you guys are so annoying. You guys always have to pay. Like, what the hell? Well, just we don't want to. We're fearful of owing anybody anything. Yeah. And and it it's just easier for us to take care of it, so that way we don't feel like we owe somebody something. Yeah. And we never expect anything from anybody. That's the hard thing to explain. Damn, Wayne, I like that. That's such a big flaw. Yeah, it sucks. It, like it's because it, like I've told you, it's uh, it, at, at a certain point you're disrespecting the other person. Yeah. Yeah, big time. And that's yeah, not we, what we want. We just don't want to feel like we owe anybody anything. But it's hard to explain that we never feel like anybody owes us. Dude, yeah, like, when I go out to places with Charlie, dude, me and him will, like, literally, we're, like, fist fighting over the bill. Like, the waitress is, like, is, like, scared to accept the money from either one of us. Yeah, but at that point, that's when you just split it in half. Just call it a day, we'll both pay half, and that way we both feel good. That's the thing, though. We live so far away, <clears throat> we have, like, the mindset of, 
oh, we're talking about Charlie comes here. You feel like you have to pay because he went out of yeah. his way. And then when you go up there, Charlie's yeah, I, like, no, you rode all the way up yeah, here. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's – but still, like, you know, both of you are doing it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, when you guys go out, just both pay half. Yeah. Because – if he comes down here, I mean, you're eventually going to go up there. I mean, so the or gas money is going to wash out. Or not even just a factor of just distance-wise. It's like, it's been so long, so it's like, oh, it's my tree. You know what I mean? Like and nobody remembers who paid last. Yeah. Please put the mic to your fucking mouth. Yeah, this is going to be an argument to I get a headset. <laughs> Let's just put tape. Let's just tape my head to the mic. It'll just be a gargled oh, noise. You're going to whine about the adhesive. It'll just be a gargled noise. Saliva. Yeah, because we, we need a fourth mic anyways. Mm-hmm. So our next purchase will be your fucking headset. Yeah. I yeah. didn't think this was going to be annoying, but it's annoying. Yeah, our uh, our next podcast, on who, what do you think? No, go. No, I'm saying like our next podcast, who, who, do, you, who do you think we can... Who says we have I, to interview anybody? Well, no, 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 not interview. No, I'm saying like have on. I, I, like Trev, Trev's stoked about being on. Well, yeah, we, we want Trev to be on. Charlie's down. All of our, all of our close friends we want on. Yeah. Charlie, Nick, Kevin. Um, Nick here about his real estate game. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Should be some fun times as soon as we get over past this uh, this awkward stage. Cause it's it's really it's really really awkward. Like I'm telling, you, I, I can't get over the awkwardness of. Uh, I don't feel awkward. Not so much now, but in the beginning, like the first 15 minutes we were talking. Yeah, because no, because like we know normally now, we just we're, just we're just talking. Well, it almost feels like we're forcing a conversation right now because normally we just when we see each other we just talk. Yeah. And as soon as we all of a sudden now we, we know it's recorded, now it's like my mind is empty. Yeah. Like now I have nothing to say. Like all of a sudden I don't have an opinion on anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as you hit record, you're like, oh shit, we got to be on right now. Uh. Well. So. That means somebody's gonna listen to this. Somebody's gonna be judging me because of what I'm saying. Well, oh, fuck, who says anybody's going to listen? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> See, if Jeremy was still drinking, I wouldn't even have a chance to talk anymore. <laughs> so? <laughs> it would benefit the show. Me just rambling on about nonsense and trying to pick an argument with somebody? Yeah. Me, who I've known you all my life, so I'm like, I don't give a fuck, I don't want to argue with you. Well, it was getting really annoying because you started calling me out on all my shit. Like, how many times did you be like, dude, stop arguing with him. He's just fucking with you. Several times you ruined my game. Yeah, because your arguments would go on for 45 minutes. <laughs> well, 90% of the time I was arguing something I didn't even believe in because it was just fun. <laughs> uh, I do you think dad stopped arguing with me. Because I, I, I would purposely talk politics and religion with him just to fuck with him. Dude, the drunken rants are the worst, though, man. Oh, God. Well, it was fun for me, except for the blackout nights when I usually had to call whoever was there hoping it wasn't going to be an apology for me. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I just, I just asked Jeremy this yesterday. Like, when you're drinking, like, you know, people say, oh, well, you're, you know, you're so brutally honest when you're drinking. And I say, I was like, well, do you, do you think that's true? Well, because there's that nonsense where it's like, oh, you show your true colors when you're drinking. Yeah. No, I mean, nine times out of ten, you see a completely different personality that's not even that person. Yeah. I mean, how many times, like, sober, I know, I can tell when when somebody's being honest with me, or it's a friend that's being honest with me, and we're having a great conversation, and they're fun to talk to and hang out with, and then hammered, still fun to hang out with. But just a whole different personality. You're having completely different conversations. They're more loose. It's just the uh, it's just I see it as different personalities. Yeah. Because you are who you are when you're sober, and then you're in a different state of mind when you're drunk. You're in a different state of mind when you're high. What do you think of uh, anger wise though when someone's drunk? I think that kind of shows a true colors though. I think you're kind of interleashing your. Uh... No, because how many times were you angry over something fucking ridiculous yeah, that's true. that would never make you mad when you were sober? But what about what about someone? That, I mean, that's actually that's just. It's more of like your ego just comes out, not the truth. It's just your ego takes over, and like you have to be like, because I mean, was it liquid courage? Is like you know yeah. what like people like to say for me for sure it was liquid courage all the time. I would never try to pick fights, but I, I had more courage because I was more willing to talk to people. I was more outgoing. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, I was going to bring up a point, but actually, it's more aligned with just borderline alcoholism is when like someone immediately like you know they start drinking you know four or five beers and you can just see their you can just see their demeanor like changing. I mean, like they're getting angrier and angrier. 
like as they're drinking. Yeah, the angry drunks. And yeah, it's like, no, that's but just, that, that's, that's I mean, at the end of the day, it's all alcoholism. Yeah. I mean, if you can drink like we like to drink, you have alcoholism. Yeah. Norm, normal reaction to alcohol is like you catch a buzz and your body tells you to stop drinking because we've had too much. Yeah. I mean, it's only alcoholics that go past that. And I don't care what anybody says. It's alcoholism. You might, it not, might not be a problem for you yet, but for sure it's alcoholism. Yeah. I mean, hell, the mine, I always considered myself an alcoholic. It just became a problem for me. Because I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hell, the only reason that, I mean, I feel like a hypocrite all the time because the only reason I quit drinking was because of a health problem. You know, it's, you know, it's weird. I, I want to ask you like with pancreas and looking into it. I don't know if you have either, but like, do you have to be, I'm not going to say, but I mean, I know any alcohol, but I'm saying like, if you took a sip of alcohol, would that harm you? Would that, could that throw, I mean, you back into probably not. I mean, I don't, I haven't. There's no. I know you don't want to risk that, but well, no. From what I've read, there's no really gauge. I mean, taking a drink of alcohol is is not going to fuck with me. It's not going to hurt me at all. My problem is, is I take a sip now, and then I I find out it's okay, and then I'm going to want to take a sip more often, and like oh, and then where new IPA came out, I want to try that one. Yeah, and like I don't have, you know, we're the same way. We don't have, uh, we do this sometimes, yeah. type of thing. No, we we are in or out. Yeah, we do something or we don't. So I, I see it as this is not something I don't do anymore. And I would love to. I mean, you know how much I love beer. I would love to be able to like, you know, take a sip of an IPA every now and then. But what's the point? Like, it's not going to get me what I want. Yeah. And on top of that, it's putting me at risk. Yeah. I don't need to put myself at risk because I take a sip now and then I, I, I come out okay. So next month I'm like, well, I can take a sip again. It was a month ago, my last sip. And I go, well, it was just a week ago, my last sip. It was just a day ago, my last sip. Oh, I got away drinking a full beer now. Yeah, exactly. And so all I'm going to do is ex- escalate it and then start drinking again and then die. You know, you know what trips me <laughs> out? Because like, like there are certain situations that were like you're way better at handling than I would ever be like. You know, sometimes, you know, Jay and I will go, go somewhere and someone real ignorant, like, oh, why aren't you drinking a Jeremy that, you know, knew he used to drink and Jeremy explained to him, like, who cares? You just drink a beer. Like, and they're just so like, just ignorant, you know, and I can't, I'll die. Dude, one beer is not going to kill you. And they keep going. Like I would end up flipping out. Like no motherfucker. Like I can't drink. I just fucking told you that. And you're like, uh, I can't, man. You keep, you know, you keep your composure the entire time. Well, it's just realizing that they're drunk. It's it's not sober people don't do that to me. Sober people, I mean, I'm not gonna say people. It's it's a lot of times it's people we know that do it to me. But that's it's you got to figure too. Look at how they know me. Yeah. I I never I was always the first one to drink. I was never scared of being the first one to pop a beer. Because yeah. everyone else, because I'm the one that made it okay for other people to drink. Six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I never cared about if it was five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> This beer is here right now. <laughs> morning drinking is fun. If you're on vacation, morning drinking is awesome. Yeah, but if, you, if you're drinking in the morning before you got to go to work, you got a problem. <laughs> Dude, I want you to look right here. So he's showing me Whenever this, you talk, he, your levels me, have to be up here. He's showing me this voice meter where the mic needs to be at, where I'm supposed to be holding to my face, and it's just not going to happen, dude. Just keep... Dude, just watch right here. Just look right here. Hey, you, how about, you need it to be up here. So much going right now, it needs to be up there. How about the entire time we're talking, you just keep pointing the mic to my face? No, because it looks like I'm just trying to suck a dick the whole time. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm okay with this. It'll not keep, I'm afraid to, but... It'll keep the mic here the entire time. Hey, actually, can we just turn the volume up? No, so do you know what loud? you're going to do tonight? practice on the mic all night no you're gonna go online and order a fucking headset <laughs> dude you know if i wore a headset i would just fuck with the entire time take it on take it off take it on take it off no because eventually you're gonna get used to it being there just like all right so anyone that knows me like i'm like a tweaker when i, I can't sit still so i i keep moving when, when jay and i were, were ordering all our podcast equipment he specifically said i need to buy a 20 foot um uh, microphone cable just so i can get up and move around and fuck around Fuck around, fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, your pancreatitis. Oh, my drinking? Yeah. Or Oh, no, you were how I deal with people constantly wanting me to, like, just have a beer. Just one beer. Well, that's not going to kill you. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's just I just don't want to form a habit because that's all I do. I escalate things really quickly, and within six months, I would be trying to drink again. So it's just it's easier for me to completely avoid it. Yeah, guys, Jeremy's a doer. With substances, yes. <laughs> uh, 
well, no, anything that's awesome I love, but I will never stop saying drinking is awesome, but it does. Now that I've been sober for how many months now? It's been we're in July, so uh, almost seven months I've been sober. December well, hold on. is your last day of drinking, right? I hate it when people say sober because I'm not sober. I haven't drank in seven months, <laughs> but it, uh, it's, I, I've realized how much drinking impeded me, how much it held me back, and if I was single... I wouldn't see it the same way. I mean, if I was, if I didn't have a kid, a child, I would, I wouldn't see it the same way. How so? Well, because, uh, I mean, how many times <laughs> could I have been a better parent rather than drinking? Yeah. How many times yeah. could I have taken Silas to the park rather than drink with friends? Or, yeah. or uh, I mean, granted, it, this was all a lot of a lot of the fucked up shit I did was more like three or four years ago. But uh, now, like, like once. Well, certain things happened in my life. I started realizing that I was being a douchebag, so I started drinking less and focusing more on Silas. But now I've gotten to the point now that I've completely stopped drinking. I've realized how much it was holding me back. Like I feel like I could be, I could have been, or now I'm focusing more on being a parent because I don't care about drinking now. To where drinking, it like, uh, it's, like it, for me, it was an upper, but it's a downer because. You know, it impedes you in so many ways. I mean, you can't drive. You can't. I mean, there's just so many things that you can't do. And then it turns you into this other person and you become an asshole. Like, I'm so happy that I don't have to wake up in the morning and, oh shit, what the fuck happened last night? Yeah. Okay, I'm at home. This is good news. Did I drive? Okay, uh, no. Uh, we, I remember taking an Uber. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. But what happened? with who I was hanging out with. I hate having to call that friend I hung out with hoping that nothing bad happened. Yeah. Because how many times when I got shit-faced did I get into arguments? Yeah. And cause problems and drama? That's the worst feeling when you wake up with that regret and the next morning you're like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. All because I took it past a few beers. Yeah. I took it past the buzz. I took it past where I wanted to stay into the next level and then, then I, you have all that pay. You, like you literally pay for it through suffering the next day you know what's crazy too is like that you you, you actually mentioned that like because now that i've noticed actually since you stopped drinking like now you're yeah you don't need any beers to talk to people like you like before you need a few beers to like start chomping up with people now you're just well i still feel that way i get social anxiety around pe a lot of people like you know um, it i've tried it sober i've tried it high but like being in a bar like i quiet down because i'm so focused on the people around me i get so socially awkward and, and i get the anxiety of being in a social situation i used to blame it on um, being in iraq because it, when i got back from iraq i was terrified of being around crowds but now it's been so long it's like well that i mean how can it still be a problem like i'm here i mean like oh um mom's surprise party there was all of our family I was in no danger whatsoever there. It was all of our family and mom's friends. I knew everybody there. And yet I was still had social anxiety. Yeah. It's like I get too worried about what I'm saying. Like right now, I could talk and somebody could listen to this and it doesn't bother me at all. But when I'm around a group of people, I get quiet. I just don't want to talk. It's like I, I heard um, – I was listening to Arsh Fierce podcast and he was talking about him being an introvert. So I'm starting to think if I'm an introvert because I just – I'm co totally content with staying in on the weekends. Like I don't need to go out and talk to people. But I, I always have this need like, no, I need to get out there and like, you know, socialize. I don't agree with that at all. I think you feel that way now because you have a kid because you enjoy peace and quiet now. I I th I think that's one hundred percent. I don't think I don't think if you didn't have Sai, you would not be like that. There's no way, because me, you won't always want to. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. I I don't see you that way at all. But I would never do it by myself. I always have to do it with somebody like you, who like I can share. I always share everything with anyone. Like we share all of our experiences, whether we're together or not. Like first person I want to call is you. Yeah. And but that's what I love. That's that that's just this. I but I would also be like. I can go, like, I mean, you can go to the desert riding for a day trip, or I could stay in. It's the both fun for me. It's both equal to me. I can stay in and just watch movies. Yeah, but I think you, you're leaning towards that way because you don't get to enjoy that anymore. No, I've always been that way. I just, I, like, looking back, like, so many times I just wanted to stay in, but, like, I'm like, no, people are going to think I'm weird. I just, I've always felt like I, I was forcing myself to get out and do something because that's what society expected. I was expected to have friends, and I was expected to be out there and socializing. And 
Yeah, I want I want to bring up key points, but then I keep thinking like, yeah, you brought the point just with me because I was like, no, it's been several weekends before before we both had kids. You're like, hey, let's go down such cliffs or let's go to the beach, let's go do this. But yeah, it's yeah, but I would never just go meet up with somebody I just met to do that. I wouldn't care to. I don't. I mean, I like talking to people, but then like when it comes to like maintaining a friendship with somebody, I find it really hard to do that because I don't care about keeping in touch. Like I find myself forcing myself to keep in touch with people, and I feel really bad about it because people I care about. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think everyone that knows you knows you're horrible at that. And, and it sucks because, like, I just don't want to talk. And at times, like, it just, I mean, it would also help if I had more free time to, you know, talk. But then then when I do have, it just sucks because if I do have time, I'm not thinking about it. I think we both just hate talking on the phone, though, in general. That's what the hard thing about living in San Diego is it's, it keeps it really, it, it just makes it really difficult to keep up with friends because the only way you can't keep up with friends is over the phone. And it's just it's 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 hard. It's hard. It's hard staying in contact with everybody on the phone. Yeah, it's. We. Uh, I would like talking to somebody face to face. It would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Where the phone just sucks. It's just it's. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same at all. It's alright though. Not really. <laughs> I just tell myself that. <laughs> if you can drink one more beer, one one last beer, would it be a Sculpin? No, no, that, they were never my favorite. Ballast Point was never my favorite. Lagunitas is my favorite. God, uh, any one of Lagunitas's beers that I, that I love to drink, um, any, um, actually, uh, it would have to be between the Brown Sugar Substitute, the Undercover Investigation Ale. That was pretty, that one was pretty and, good. And um, uh, there's one more. I, I don't remember their beers anymore. But the Undercover Investigation, like, I love that beer. And buying the six pack. <laughs> Every time it came out, because it was a limited release, every time it came out, I'd buy it, and every time I would forget, because I'd get three beers deep and be like, why the fuck am I drunk already? This is ridiculous. And I look down, it's 9.7%. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, drinking IPA now, it's just, it's, oh man, it just takes you to another level. Two beers in, it's like, but it's like, you got hit with a brick. It's not, it's not when you're slowly, like, you know, off a shit beer like Rolling Rock or something. It's not like you're slowly progressing. It's like, no, you're just, you're fine. And then all of a sudden, duh, oh shit, I'm drunk now. Well, yeah, but I always liked that. Yeah. Because that's when I opened up. <laughs> uh, just a social butterfly in general. Yeah, you, you take after mom in that aspect. Yeah. I like it though, man. Meeting new people are fun. In the right situation, like there's, so, cause there's so many times where I'm like, oh, I just don't want to, I just never want to talk. Like I just, but I love, but that's what pisses, that's what's what frustrating to me is that I love to talk to people and find out things about them, and like just having those conversations about topics nobody ever wants to talk about, and just you know, getting a new perspective on a uh, topic or just whatever the case might be. I just, but there's so many. If it always has to be with somebody I know and respect. If I'm just meeting you, I'm just like me, whatever. Yeah, Jeremy likes picking the creepy guys to talk to. We'll be at a bar, and Jeremy will pick like the regular that no one, everyone avoids talking to because you know he's batshit insane. Jeremy will talk to that guy because they have interesting stories. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you. I can't tell you how many wall bars you've been to, and then you talk to the craziest guy in there, and I'm like, why the fuck are you talking to him? Because they have stories. <laughs> yeah, he's batshit insane. That's his story. Well, I don't know how to end this, but we need to stop here, and we'll call this episode one. And, we love uh, you guys. We'll, we'll uh, come back next we, week with something we, else. We love our one fan. Well, <laughs> we're hoping that uh, we can get this up in the next couple of days, but we're gonna. It might take a week. All right. So, uh, for now, peace. Later, guys. <laughs>